Working with biological materials and agents involves potentially coming into contact with infectious agents that can cause disease, such as viruses, bacteria, or fungi. There are four containment levels established by the Public Health Agency of Canada for the safe handling of infectious materials or toxins, ranging from containment level one, which is a basic laboratory for work with lower risk agents, to containment level four, for highly sophisticated facilities for work with the highest risk biological agents and toxins. Here at Ryerson, we have containment level one and two laboratories only. All containment level two laboratories are regulated by the Public Health Agency of Canada, and they must comply with all legislative requirements and the respective standards. This includes physical containment requirements, such as structure, location, surface finishes, and air handling, as well as operational practice requirements, such as training, personal protective equipment use, and procedures for entry, exit, waste disposal, and the safe handling of materials. Ensure you're not bringing any non-laboratory related items, such as school bags, food, or drinks into the lab. After entering the laboratory, put on a lab coat. Lab coats should be hung on hooks away from street clothes, so as to not risk cross-contamination. Put on any additional personal protective equipment as required by the nature of the lab work or activities. Remove your lab coat and other personal protective equipment. When removing your gloves, do so properly to avoid any bare skin contact with the surface of the gloves. Properly wash your hands near the lab exit. Ideally, this sink will be hands-free operation. Biosafety cabinets provide personal protection through a continuous stream of inward air, which helps prevent aerosols from escaping through the front opening. This air is exhausted by passing through a high particulate air filter, or HEPA, to protect the environment. When using a biosafety cabinet, check the sash and pressure gauges to verify that they are within the acceptable range. Confirm inward airflow by holding a tissue at the middle of the edge of the sash to establish that it's drawing in. Do not block the grill. Place aerosol generating equipment towards the back of the biosafety cabinet. Do not rest your elbows or arms on the grill or work surface. Keep a bottle of an appropriate disinfectant in the biosafety cabinet. Your workflow must be from clean or non-contaminated items to dirty areas. Collect waste in a container in your biosafety cabinet, emptying it when full. Try to stay put while working and avoid moving in and out of the biosafety cabinet as you don't want to disturb the air circulation of the cabinet. Minimize aerosol production during pipetting and pouring, as well as during centrifuge, solicitor, and shaker usage.
To prevent needle stick injuries, use safety engineered needles if possible. If you need to recap your needle, please do so by using a recapping tool. You can create recapping tools by using other objects to hold the needle cap rather than using your hand. Dispose of sharps into hard shell containers bearing the biohazard symbol. If you need to transport materials during your lab work, please do so by using clean secondary containers or carts. In case of a spill during your lab work, follow these steps to clean it up. Wear the necessary personal protective equipment. Take the absorbent material from the lab spill kit and soak it with the appropriate disinfectant. Cover the spill with the absorbent and close the sash. Allow for 20 to 30 minutes of absorption. After adequate contact time, collect spilled materials, clean from the perimeter towards the center of the spill, place the waste into a labeled disposal bag, and clean up the surface with the appropriate disinfectant 